One of the stories that we've talked about quite a bit on Timcast IRL, CBP agents knowingly trafficking children into slavery. And I ask, I ask myself, I ask the audience, I ask all of you, how could there be men who knowingly do this? The truth is, my friends, evil exists. And we're having a cultural breakdown. I think the reality is that always there are evil people. I like to talk about how, uh, you know, with success, do you really see the evil in people you never knew existed? When you are but a humble man, poor, broke, you think you have friends. What you don't realize is that some of these people are not really your friends, but they have nothing to gain from stabbing you in the back. When you become more successful, oh boy, do these people show their true selves. And that's true for society as a whole. I think back to 100 years ago or 200 years ago, and we can talk about how there were crimes and there were ills and ails, etc. But it seems to be a lot worse today. Maybe. Perhaps it's because of population density and a shattered culture that you see Texas National Guardsmen caught smuggling a migrant. How about a criminal alien? Across southern border in his work SUV after fleeing a checkpoint, sparking 100 mile an hour chase, ended up uh, at, at, it. Uh, the chase ended when cops threw a spike strip. Now, why would a Texas National Guardsman who was deployed to protect the border try and commit an atrocity like this? Now, I understand some people might say, oh, he's smuggling a single guy. Atrocity. Grains of sand making a heap. Snowflakes in an avalanche. You do not get an atrocity without the actions of ordinary men. And this man here was willing to facilitate criminal enterprise for what? For money. I'll tell you why. You see, you go back to a time when these things weren't happening or they were happening a lot less. And the issue is that with a unified culture and community, people feared being shunned or ostracized. That is, there were crimes you know, there's organized crime, there's drug dealing, there's bad stuff, and people feared getting caught. Today, there is no fear that someone catches you. If you do, it's a mechanical cold system, and you'll probably get released without bail. You see, back in the day, if you committed a crime in a town, the town wasn't very big. They knew who you were, they knew what you did, and even being accused was dangerous. That's why the founding fathers said, innocence until proven guilty. Because you can't just have an accusation destroy someone's life. And then it turns out it was wrong and an innocent person suffered. Well, here we are. This National Guardsman doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care what I think. And he doesn't fear in any way the repercussions of being caught committing this crime. That's what's fascinating. The biggest deterrent for crime was your inability to survive. And we have ended that. Now think about it. There's no death penalty for these crimes or anything like that. That's not, what, that's not what I'm saying. If you lived in a small town and you committed a serious crime and everyone said, we won't work with you, you're a criminal, get out. How will you eat? Where will you live? What will you do? Now you got to pack your bags and move because the community has shunned you and humans need other humans to survive. Today, this guardsman knows if he gets caught he can walk two blocks and no one will know his name. That's it. His money is as green as everybody else's. So what do you get? As this collapse of culture, community continues, you will get more and more ordinary men committing evil actions. The Daily Mail reports a National Guardsman is accused of smuggling a migrant across the border into Texas while deployed to stop. You know, what? I, I, I want to edit these articles. Asylum seekers entering the U.S. and his arrest was captured in dramatic footage. They say migrant. They say asylum seekers. These are criminal aliens. OK, look, that's not an emotional thing. I'm not trying to insult these people. I actually have tremendous respect for many of these people. I say many because some of them are rapists and murderers and I have no respect for them. But the guy who says, I love Buffalo Wild Wings, I'm like, damn, I love Buffalo Wild Wings, too. I can relate, but I'm not willing to travel thousands of miles through desert and the top of trains to get Buffalo Wild Wings. This guy is. I'm impressed. The only problem is you broke our laws, which means academically, sir, you're a criminal alien. But I'll be fair. 
I tremendously respect that guy more than most Antifa leftists who are like, America's racist. Dude, America's got Buffalo Wild Wings, okay? You got to understand, that's a quote, okay? I'm not making that up. There was an, an, a guy from the LA Times asking migrants why they were coming to the US several years ago, and the guy said Buffalo Wild Wings. And I'm just like, B-dubs, you got to do a commercial about that. Just a bunch of people crawling through the desert, emaciated, and they're like, it was worth it, and they make it to B-dubs. Let's be real. A delicious variety of sauces and wings, mm, boneless or otherwise. What a fun place to hang out, huh? In reality, I cannot respect people who break the law. And, 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 and I'll clarify that too. It's like some, some laws are not good laws that I get. Law does not mean morality. But these are people who are causing economic disruption, harming other Americans, and they're, they're, they're causing problems and they're committing crimes in the process. I can't respect that. I can respect the drive, the journey, and the desires, all of that. And I can respect them way more than Antifa, like I said. But you break the law, you're a criminal alien. Specialist Sevion Amari Donovan Johnson, ooh, four names, 26, was arrested around 3.45 p.m. Sunday after a high-speed chase with police in Brackettville, Texas. Texas Department of Public Safety and Kinney County Sheriff's deputies pursued him after he abruptly turned around ahead of a checkpoint on Highway 674. His sudden course change was suspicious, and their pursuit led to a 15-mile chase at speeds of over 100 miles an hour. Sheriff Brad Coe confirmed Johnson was a member of the Texas National Guard assigned to Operation Lone Star, which aims to prevent migrants breaching the border at the Eagle Pass crossing. Dramatic body camera uh, and dash cam footage showed Johnson being hauled out of his silver GMC SUV given to him for work after it was finally stopped by road spikes. Now, here's the funny thing. You know, I often wonder why I'm like, how is it that someone like me didn't end up in a life of crime? You know, like what, what is that distinction where someone does become a criminal and someone doesn't? The reality is, if you are smart, you don't need to commit crimes. You can figure out making money. I tell this story quite a bit. I love this story. There was a guy in Chicago and he was and, and there were kids on the south side, teenagers, they would they would sell pot. And one day this guy was like, man, y'all are dumb. And they're like, why? And he's like, what are you selling dope for? And they're like, I need to make money, dude. And he's like, man, he's like, I sell T-shirts. You can't go to jail for, well, you can, you, depending on how you sell them. But he, what, what, he, what this guy said he did was he looked up all the different venues and he, and he looked at all the bands that were playing. And then like a month out, he'd contact one of the opening acts. So, so they're smaller bands. And he'd say, hey, do you guys have merch? And they would go, no. And he'd be like, I'll make a deal with you. I will make t-shirts for you guys using your logo and everything. I'll give you 20% of everything I sell. And these bands that can't afford to buy merch and set all that stuff up are like, deal. Holy crap. So this dude was like, I sell t-shirts, man. He's like, I work two, Fridays and Saturdays. He's like, I make like two grand a week. Yep. Because these bands had fans and friends and family. They, and a lot of these bands, it's like they invite 50 of their friends out. Their family comes. Look at the shirts for Jimmy's band. And he was like, y'all are dumb. So that's what I was thinking about. Like, why would this guy do this? Why would it is like five or six grand? Apparently he was offered. The funny thing is, if the dude did not turn around from the checkpoint, he probably would have been fine. You pull up to the checkpoint and you go, hey, how's it going? And they're like, you got IDs? I'm like, yeah, let me get my ID. Uh, hey, hey, Wally, you got your ID? No, oh, Wally doesn't got his ID on him. What are they going to do? They're going to do anything. They're like, well, you need an ID. Be like, ah, Wally doesn't have his ID. Like, what do you do? They can't do anything. There's no suspicion. There's probable cause. He turns around, speeds at 100 miles an hour. Well, now you broke the law. Now they know exactly what you're doing. Now they're going to investigate. Now they're going to arrest your passenger. Now they figure out you're smuggling. These are not smart people. My friend, you'd make more money selling T-shirts, like I told you. I had a guy once tell me, here's advice to all of you. Good luck if you can pull it off. He said, being rich is easy. You know, I was making good money. And he was like, you should be making way more money than this. It's like, it's not hard. And he said what he did, what he did was he researched weight loss tips, dating tips, like real basic stuff, financial tips. And then he made small booklets that were like 30 to 50 pages long with like top 10 ways to do whatever. And he said, he's like, I just went on Facebook and put up advertisements for the book. The books auto sell on Amazon. And if the book costs $5, 
but it costs, you know, he's like, so basically you run the ads for a month. You figure out how much it costs in advertisements till you sell one book. Let's say for every $4 you spend in ads, you sell one book, sell the book for five bucks. You're now making a dollar from every book. Bang. That's it. You found your price point. And uh, the thing about weight loss, dating tips and financial tips is everybody's looking for new ones. So he was like, you put these in rotation. He's like, I make seven figures. That's all I do. I don't even work. He's like, I, I, I check the numbers every week to make sure everything's working. And then every couple of months, I'll, I'll write up another short book. That's all I do. Product, sale, bang. It is not hard to figure out how to make money. You just have to want to do it. I'm not saying being a millionaire is easy or anything like that. I'm saying you don't have to smuggle illegal immigrants as a guardsman to make an extra buck. Only the stupidest people in the world are going to destroy their lives over it. Think about this investment opportunity. I tell you this. You take this investment and by the end of the week, I could put $6,000 in your pocket or there's a decent percentage chance you go to prison for the rest of your life. You're like, wow, what a great invent. No, that's insane. You're better off standing on a street corner with a bucket that says money, please. And then just doing the chicken dance, bro. I'm not kidding. You go downtown Chicago, you go to New York and you just put up a, like a, a, a coffee tin from Folgers while doing the chicken dance. You will make more money and you won't go to jail. That being said, I'm not sure everybody wants to do the chicken dance for cash. But is this really what it's all about? My guy, sell T-shirts. That idea never gets old. You've got, you know, 18, 19 year olds starting a band, playing their first shows. Their friends from school are going to show up. Everybody's going to want one of their T-shirts. They don't have the managerial power and they don't have the business acumen to get started on that stuff. And so you get a logo, you print out a bunch of shirts, Teespring makes it easy and you sell them. And it's really that simple. The guy was like, yeah, a couple hundred shirts. Bang, you sell them all. The band gets extra cash. They're stoked. And he's like, I could do it for two bands in one show even because these people don't have merch. So I bring the merch. Everybody wins. That's what it means to start a business. That's crazy. It's crazy to me that people just don't have that within them. I don't know. It bums me out. You know, I used to, uh, there was a period where I played guitar in the subway in Chicago. And I was making, uh, depending on what I would play. So I, I tried to play top 40s, like classic songs, CCR, Have You Ever Seen the Rain, stuff like that. I'd make $40 an hour. 40 You can't really play that long. Your fingers get all blistery and your voice runs dry. But I'd make like 50 bucks. I'd play for an hour. And then I was done. I was in Hollywood. I'd stand on Hollywood Boulevard. And I just would goof off. I'd just be like, whatever. And I'd just play songs. I had a guy from a restaurant come out. And he's like, you're really good, man. And he gave me 10 bucks. I'm like, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Then I'd walk two blocks, put it into, my, into the ATM deposit, and I'd see my money going up. I was paying my rent. That's how I was living. It was fun. I wanted more. Wasn't really, uh, you know, wasn't really enough. So I did other things. But it's crazy to me that you would sell your soul. Your soul. This guy sells his soul. For what? That's wild. Evil evil people. Why are you running, dude? The arresting KCSO deputy asked as he handcuffed Johnson behind his back as he lay face down in the grass. I got very, very scared, he replied. Other police in the background said a Hispanic man was seen fleeing to the south. I'm so effing stupid, Johnson said, to which the deputy agreed. Yeah, you are effing stupid, man. Do you know how many people you could have effing killed, man? Jesus Christ. Johnson told the officers he had no weapons on him, but he had one in his car. He was then loaded back into the back of the KCSO vehicle. Other officers were seen searching the car and trying to track down the fleeing migrant. You mean criminal alien who was involved in a high speed pursuit could have killed people. Authorities discovered he was from the Texas National Guard while going through his belongings, finding official IDs and gear. The deputy also photographed a pistol lying in the passenger seat. Johnson, who lives in San Antonio, was allegedly offered five thousand to six thousand dollars to take the man over the border undetected. My dude. Play poker, OK? It's just there, there's there's ways to make money. Po like like. Go. Uh, I got to tell you guys. You go to Friday night. Let me let me let me tell you about the poker boys. OK, you go to a casino on a Friday night where there's lots of drunk people. And it's called game selection. It's free money sitting right there for you. Study how to play the game. It's not complicated. It's basic math. You, you, you sit there until you get pocket aces or ace king suited or whatever. 
And then you just shove on. You have an 80% chance of doubling your money if someone calls. I mean, maybe not. You can lose your money for sure. My point is, I love going to uh, the poker room on Friday nights when they have big shows. And you get these like 25-year-old dudes. They got a bunch of money from their parents or for whatever it is. They got a couple hundred bucks on the table. And I'm like, it's, it's not so much for me, but I'm telling you, there, there are people there that they make a living doing this. The guys are drunk. They're bored. They're with their friends. They don't know what they're doing and they're having fun. And they bet the money and you get it for free. I'm just saying, it's not worth it, man. Go like figure out legitimate means of exchange. This dude decided to sell his soul to human, to become a human smuggler. That's nuts. People are evil, dude. The man he was allegedly transporting later surrendered to authorities to be processed by Border Patrol agents. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's office lashed out at Johnson in a strongly worded statement after the arrest. If the allegations are true, the accused is a traitor and a criminal. Press Secretary Andrew Mahalera said, yowza, traitor. We have zero tolerance for Texans who violate laws that directly contradict the mission we are seeking to achieve. Dude, dare I say he's a traitor. As a National Guardsman with a sworn duty and a mission. Yo, if you are if you are in the National Guard and you're ordered like, hey, Stop bad guy from doing thing. And you're like, okay. And then you go and help bad guy. You're a traitor. That's wild. Aiding the enemy. The accused accused illegal smuggling may subject him to a mandatory minimum prison sentence of at least 10 years. He deserves more. I got to be honest. I think this dude. Man, it's tough life. Life in prison. What do you think? I think many of you would agree life in prison. I'll tell you why it's harsh. It is life in, life in prison with no chance of parole. You're done. You are a traitor to your state. You are a traitor to your country. You committed an atrocity, human smuggling. And I'll, and I'll say transporting a single male is not the same as what these, what, what these other people are doing, these cartels. But you are the snowflake in the avalanche and you made the choice. You stood alongside the human traffickers and smugglers. You betrayed your state. You betrayed your nation life in prison. And that, I think, is light. Johnson was attached to the 100th Mobile Public Affairs Detachment and shot several videos of guardsmen exercises. Co said Johnson had his Texas National Guard gear in the car, and he wasn't the first guardman his office had caught allegedly smuggling. Traitors. He added people from all walks of life, including lawyers and preachers, were trying to make money smuggling. Evil people, man. You know what inspires me? Hachiko the dog, the dog who stood for 10 years waiting for his owner to return, but his owner was dead. Many of you know the story. Uh, March 8th, I believe, is Hachiko Day in Japan. It's the day of loyalty. See, this dog, most of you know, I'm going to tell the story. This dog would follow his owner to the train, see him off to work. At the end of the day, around 5 p.m., when the owner a professor would come back. They'd walk home together. One day at school, the professor suffered a stroke and died. Never came back. No matter how many times they tried to remove and rehome Hachiko, he would return to the train station to wait at the train for his owner. Now that is loyalty. And it's it's a legend. They built a statue in the honor of this dog who has more within him than so many of these humans do. Brutal. There are bad dogs. That's why we say bad dog. And there are good dogs who sometimes do bad, and we call them bad dog because we say, hey, we're insulting you. But just think about that. What inspires me is honor and loyalty. I don't care for loyalty to evil people. No, that's stupid. I care about loyalty to your community, to your country, to your mission, to swear a sacred oath and duty and betray it. What's the opposite of building someone, someone a statue, locking them up for the rest of their lives? He said, we don't know what's going on in their lives to make them do this, but they're going to get caught. Johnson was charged with human smuggling, felony evading arrest and unlawful weapons possession. Life. Life and no parole. An arrest affidavit said his trooper tried to pull him over for speeding, which prompting the, prompted the chase and the guardsmen slowed down to let the migrant jump out. 
It is unclear if Johnson may have previously smuggled migrants across the border without being caught. I bet he did. I bet he did. He's a moron. Because like I said, if he just pulled up the checkpoint, was like, howdy, can I help you? And they were like, IDs, please. And he's like, sure. And he's like, hey, Wally, I, oh, you, Wally doesn't get no ID on him. What can you do? They can't do anything. And, and they can talk to him in Spanish or whatever. And the guy can be like, yeah, I live here and, you know, whatever. I don't know. That's it. What are you going to do? Maybe, maybe he gets detained for suspicion. And then here's the best part. The smuggler can be like, dude, honestly, I have no idea. It's like a friend of a friend. And my friend said that his name was Wally. And he asked if I could give him a ride. And I said, sure. That's it. Then you say, I'm not saying anything else until I talk to a lawyer. And this guy would not be called a traitor, but they're stupid people and they're evil people. It's sad, man. It's sad. This is where we're at. Evil people. How can this country survive without honor, integrity, and loyalty? You know, I don't know what it is. I don't know why I feel this way. I don't know what inspires me to to feel this way. This idea of being a man of your word. Even the Joker was a man of his word. Fictional character, I know. I'm kidding. But there are so many people whose word mean nothing. And if, you're, if, if, if your word means nothing, then, then what do you really have? This country is in trouble with stuff like this. We, we need, I say life in prison. Some people might say worse. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.